In this example, we've got a 100 gram mass. Um, it's been compressed onto a spring by 20 centimeters. The spring constant is given as 200 newtons per meter. And we release it from rest here. The spring uncoils and shoots the mass off. And we're trying to find the final speed of that. One interesting point I wanted to bring up before we get into it is just to point out that this is the release point right here. When that spring gets back to its equilibrium length, or x equals zero, it's going to start to pull backwards on itself to try to get back to its equilibrium length. Like it'll fly through equilibrium a little bit, but then immediately slow down because it's trying to restore to this length. That's why you get a separation happening right at that point. So we're going to use energy conservation to do this. We are now using a potential energy function as kind of a bookkeeping device for how much work the spring is doing. And once we have that formalism, we don't have to directly talk about the work done by a spring anymore. We just use this. So I don't have any friction acting. So my total mechanical energy is a constant. E initial is equal to E final. And then I look at all the sources of energy in my initial state. And if you wanted to be really thorough, you could write down, okay, I have a spring and I have a mass that could possibly be moving. So I'm going to have a one half K X initial squared plus one half M V initial squared. And then in my final state, again, I have a spring. So I'm going to put it in there just to be 100% thorough. And then a kinetic energy. And then it, typically in these problems, you're going to find out that a bunch of these terms are zero. And if you see that before you write down this step, it's okay to just skip the ones that are zero. In the initial state, I have spring energy for sure. The spring is coiled, but my velocity is zero. So the kinetic energy term dies out. In my final state, I no longer have spring energy stored. So that term is going to be zero. But I do have kinetic energy in the mass. So... I can write down 1 half kx initial squared equals 1 half m v final squared. And again, it's okay if you just want to start by writing that down. All right, so rather than plug in numbers, let's go ahead and get a general solution this time. I'm trying to find v final, so I'm going to divide both sides by m. I'm going to go ahead and flip it around and say V final is equal to the square root of K X initial squared over M. Uh, one thing I wanted to point out here is that we probably should say X initial is a negative number, negative 20 centimeters, because it's to the left of the equilibrium position. But when we're, when we're calculating energy, we're always going to square the thing, so it doesn't matter. I'm going to get a positive energy out of it. Let's go ahead and plug everything in. That's 200 for K. X initial, you got to put in SI units, so that's 0.2 meters squared. Again, I just ignored the minus sign because I, I knew I was going to square it. And the mass needs to be SI units. That's 0.1 kilograms. And let's run the numbers real quick. And I get 8.94 8.94 meters per second. 